This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In this video, we are going to log in to Apex as one of the developers in one of the accounts we created, and we're going to use some of the features of SQL Workshop. We're going to run scripts, which are sets of SQL commands to create tables and enter data into those tables. Once we have run the scripts, we can use the component called Object Browser, which is part of SQL Workshop, to see at the database level what has been created. The tables we're going to create do not exist in Apex. They exist in the Oracle database environment, and Apex sits on top of that to provide an interface to the database. So the first thing I'm going to do here is come back to our login screen and log in as a developer. In my case, the workspace name is Animal Shelter. And I'm going to log in as Mina Mendez. And I can see that I'm logged in as Mina. And I'm going to go to SQL Workshop. Before we run the scripts, let's take just a minute and look at what it is you're going to build. The scenario for this video series is Animal Shelter. I've not worked at an animal shelter. I'm making some simplifying assumptions about how data is captured and maintained at an animal shelter. So don't expect this to be a fully functional database and application for maintaining an animal shelter. Some of the tables, these would be the tables that we're going to get when we run the scripts. One is persons. Persons is a generic or abstract term for clients, people who come with animals or come and adopt animals. We have volunteers that work at the shelter. And we have employees that work at the shelter. So things that are common to all of these, such as first name, last name, address, phone number, will be maintained in the person's table. But we also have things that are specific to employees and only employees. So it will be a separate table. We're going to have a zips table that provides the city and state information if we enter in a zip code. So you've seen this before when you're filling out something on the web probably. Select a zip code, a mail code, and then related information comes in automatically. We will have a transaction table, and the transaction table will be used to record things such as the receipt of an animal when they come into the shelter, or the adoption of an animal when they leave the shelter, or perhaps they get relocated to a different shelter. Then we have animals, which during this video series we will handle dogs, but we will build the database so it accommodates additional types of animals such as cats, birds, etc. And then we will have an activities table. So I'm not really explaining wh exactly why we have these tables. There will be some related database videos that link to this Apex 3 video that you really should take time to look at so you understand why we're building the database the way we built it. Let me give you a graphical representation of this. So we have persons. I'll pause the video while I draw some of the boxes. And I'll just finish up here drawing the boxes. And notice that I've already started drawing some lines between these boxes. The boxes represent data tables in the database. So zip is related to person because if we have a person zip code, this table will provide the city and state name. We have a relationship between transactions and persons. Actually, we have two of those. Because we have a person who's a client 
who has found an animal and brought it in. We have a person who's an employee who's receiving that animal at the shelter. So a person in one role and another person in another role. We have the employees. We have people in the person's table who are employees. So that relationship is represented by that line. We have the animal that's being brought in or taken home from the animal shelter, and that's represented by that line. And then an animal that comes into the shelter may have certain procedures done, such as being spayed or neutered, uh, perhaps trained or groomed, and so those will be recorded in activities and they're related to animals. So the line here shows that there's a relationship. Persons are involved in transactions bringing an animal in and taking an animal home. Some persons are employees. A transaction is for a particular animal. An animal may have more than one activity. Be sure and take a look at the database videos related to this APEX video so that you fully understand what's going on, especially if you haven't worked with relational databases before. Some of the concepts are critical. Back in APEX, we're going to select SQL scripts, and then we want to upload a script. Now, the script will be, in my case, in CTEMP the temp folder in the C drive. So I need to go to that. And there's a folder that the zipped file created. And I want to look for Create Animal Shelter Tables. So I'll double click on that. And then I will click on Upload. When it's uploaded, we see it here. Nothing has happened in terms of creating those tables yet. To create the tables, we have to come over to Run and click that. And Run Now. And then scroll down and look at 66 statements processed, zero errors. That's kind of important. If you had any errors, we would have to figure out what the problem is. So we've run a script that has actually created several things. How do we know? because we can go to SQL Workshop and go to Object Browser. And now when we look at Object Browser under Tables, we see the list of tables, which you saw in an earlier diagram. If I go to Sequences, I see Sequences there. If I go to Triggers, I see Triggers there. So running that one script has given us all these objects that actually exist at the database level. If I were to go to SQL Developer and log in, I, first, I need to make a connection. So I'm creating a connection to the account or schema called animal underscore shelter. And by default, you have a setup to connect to the locally installed Oracle XE database. I can click test, and it didn't work. So I've retyped the password, and now I have success here, and I can connect. What I'm doing is showing you that outside of Apex, at the database level, I can look at this schema and see that I do actually have those tables. They do exist because I ran the scripts in Apex. I'm going to create a separate video where I run the scripts to add data to these tables because if I look at one right now and I click on the Data tab here, and I could also do this in Apex, if I look at it here, I don't see data. If I come back here to the object browser and come to tables and I click one, such as animals, I'm seeing the columns and how the columns in the table are defined, but when I click on data, I don't have any data. That'll be in the next video. Look at the SQL videos to explain the script commands and look at the database videos to explain how and why the database is constructed like it is. Remember the naming conventions for related videos in this tutorial series. The Apex videos are 00, zero through 12, 14, whatever, however many videos there are. If there's a related database video, 
for a specific video, let's say I'm at Apex 02, then that name is going to be, for the database, is going to be Apex 02 DB, and then the number of that video series. Because for this one Apex video, I might end up having two or even three videos about the database concepts. There'll be some Apex videos that have none of these, but this is how you can access the database videos specific to that Apex video. And the same thing would go if I have Apex, let's say 03, I have something specific I want to cover in SQL. That would be SQL and 01 through SQL 03. So I would have 1, 2, 3. All of these relating to the Apex video 03. Hopefully that'll help.